Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be conducting a pre-release review of the Mini FCU unit by Mini Cockpits. We will be covering the actual unit construction, the setup for X-Plane 12, as well as a live demonstration of the product. Without further ado, let's get started. This is how the unit uh, arrives in this box. Stop flying your airplane without a mouse is the motto for Mini FCU. The packaging is uh, pretty sufficient in my view. And uh, the unit came undamaged, uh, well protected from the inside as you have seen in my uh, first short on the channel. And here is the actual Mini FCU unit. It is an old plastic uh, construction, but I must say that it's very well constructed and it's got, it's very light in weight. The buttons and the switches are quite nice. The buttons are a bit clicky uh, in my view, uh, but they're not bad. And the, the knobs here are done quite nicely. They have a really nice feel to them. All the buttons here are operational. Uh, the display is very nice and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. You've got a couple of uh, connections here for future mini cockpit projects, which will connect to both sides of the unit. As you can see here, the bottom of the unit has suction cups, which is a good consideration considering that this is a very light uh, unit and it is designed to fit on a desk. The only thing uh, about this is the limited uh, mounting options which is uh, something I really don't like that much. Overall though, I'm quite pleased with, uh, with the product here. And there's a nice message from many copies saying it wouldn't have been possible without you. That's all the backers of the project. Overall, uh, very good construction of the, of the units itself. One thing I have a serious issue with is the USB cable that comes with the Mini FCU unit. It's a very, very short cable and definitely not sufficient for most of us um, as the, my PC is, uh, is quite a bit away from, you know, from my flight controls and, and the rest of it where I can actually set uh, the unit. So I had to um, actually have an extension. I do have an extension USB cable that I've used. It works beautifully, but I think out of the box, just be prepared. If you have this on order and it's coming, you're more than likely going to need a longer USB cable or an extension to extend this as it is just really way too short. That's one thing I really do not like. And I think in future production, that many cockpits should reconsider the length of the USB cable. Mini FCU currently supports select aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane 12, as well as X-Plane 11. The installation is quite straightforward and you're gonna to need to install the software as the first step to operate your Mini FCU. To do this, point your browser to minicockpit.com, then, Click here and select the wiki. From the wiki, select how to set up Mini FCU. This part includes all the information that you need as well as links to download the relevant software to the flight simulator you're using. In my case, I'm going to download the required software for X-Plane 12. The download will result in a zip file that you need to extract. And once you have done that, double click on the installer you were more than likely receive this message, Windows protected your PC. Just click on more info and run anyway. As you can see here, I have already installed the software. So it is asking me if I want to repair a mini cockpit data link software or remove it. I'm going to go ahead and cancel the process. The installer is going to ask you for your X-Plane 12 root installation. It will then automatically install the required plugin for X-Plane 12 in your resources plugins folder. As you can see here, I have mini cockpit X-Plane 12. The installation is now complete and you'll be able to access the mini cockpit plugin from within your X-Plane plugins menu. All right, let's go ahead and set up the unit and take a look. 
I have now fired up X-Plane 12 and we're currently situated at San Francisco International Airport runway 01 left in the Tolis A320neo. The first thing I'd like to point your attention to is the plugins menu now shows mini cockpit. There are a few options that you can select. As you can see here, it indicates that the hardware is connected in case your unit, uh, when you make changes to the unit, if you don't see them happening on the FCU, just use the reset button and that will restart the connection between mini cockpit and the simulator and then things should work just fine. The expert is a button on the unit, which is located down here. And you can program this to, um, to activate the flight director or disengage the flight director, or you could have it mapped to the landing system, which is this button here. Right now I have it mapped to the landing system. All right, so this is everything you need to know and it works seamlessly. I really didn't have to do anything or tweak anything. It just really works. The plugin just worked. All right, let's test the unit a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna test here the, let's go ahead and test the heading select here. As you can see, again, there is no lag in what I do on the unit, on the FC unit versus the, uh, the simulator. Let me also do here the uh, altitude. So we're gonna set the altitude to 37,000 feet. Right, so that is 37,000. You can switch from the thousands to the hundred units, as you can see with this knob here. And now I can change this uh, to 36,000. We'll put this back and go to 37,000. We can also change the heading knob here. We're gonna set this to 010, which is the uh, runway heading right now. And we'll just wait for the alignment. I really do like the unit because it makes things very simple in terms of manipulating the heading, the altitude, and the speed as well. So if I pull this knob here out, as you can see now, I can change the uh, speed as well. And pushing the button in will activate manage speed. Again, the unit works exactly as it should. It does perform exactly as it should and exactly as advertised and exactly as you'd expect it to. We do have full alignment now, so let me start the engines and we'll come back to take off and play a little bit more with the unit while in flight. All right, we are now ready for takeoff. Let's take the power to 50%. Release sparking brake. And Manflex SRS and runway. Positive rate and gears going up. And we'll begin the turn. Right, let's engage autopilot one. Autopilot one is now engaged. And you can see the light illuminated both on the unit and in the virtual cockpit. All right, now we are on the flight path and it's a good time for us to start playing with the FCU unit here. We're gonna change the speed from manage to unmanage speed. And as you can see here, the change is instant, uh, 230. And we're gonna, now you can see the changes made in the cockpit here as well on the display. You can see that I'm now in manual speed. We can just click the button here and go back to manage speed. As you can see, the change is instantaneous. Uh, the unit does really work exactly as advertised. It definitely does minimize the number of mouse clicks that you have to do. And it really does provide uh, an immersive experience uh, in my view. Uh, in terms of flying Airbus. 
Um, and this is, of course, only for Airbus, but uh, I think it works um, exactly as advertised. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and change the heading, uh, for example. Uh, so we're going to change now this to a heading of 140. Uh, again, as you can see, the change is instantaneous. No lag works exactly as it should. I'm, I'm, I have the unit set on my right, actually. Normally, ideally, I'll have it on top of my uh, flight control, uh, but just so that I can set up a proper camera position for you guys, I have set it up that way. All right, so again, we can go to nav mode uh, once more, again, with a click of a button, and we can obviously change the altitude as well here. So now this is 32, and let's go ahead and engage autopilot 2. So I'm going to click on autopilot 2, and it works exactly as it should. It turns off autopilot 1 and turns on autopilot 2. So everything works exactly as it should. My concluding remarks on Mini FCU by Mini Cockpits is that it is a well-constructed unit made all of plastic, very lightweight, Serious issue with the short USB cable, so if you're going to order this, make sure that you order as well a long USB cable, or if you have a USB extension, you're definitely going to need it. The mounting uh, suction cups are nice, it's a nice option, but in my view very limiting in terms of where to set this unit up. The unit is obviously very, very lightweight, so it is very difficult to mount it anywhere. Um, and without those suction cups, it's going to be become very difficult to press on the buttons. The unit does provide um, a level of immersion never experienced before. I think especially for Airbus pilots will really appreciate what this unit delivers in terms of the immersion, turning those knobs and pushing the autopilot as we've experienced in this short video is definitely uh, a game changer, I think, both for um, MSFS and X-Plane. The drawback is, up to this point, there are very limited aircraft supported, um, including the fly-by-wire in Microsoft Flight Simulator and the Tolus A320neo in X-Plane 12. This is pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys in this short uh, preview or pre-release review of the uh, Mini FCU by Mini Cockpits. I hope that you have found it useful. If you have any questions, please do post them in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you did like it. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.